In this example, we are going to still be using the same idea with the limit um, that uh, we're gonna have to plug in, um, we're gonna be doing the limit as x goes to infinity and negative infinity. We're gonna have to be plugging in uh, an infinity into this. So we did a similar problem to this in a previous lesson and it looked like this where um, we took and divided every single piece by the, the highest power in the denominator. So we divided everything by an x to the fourth, which gave us this. And then we still, at the end of the day, on the limit, still have to plug in. So when we plugged in, our, these values became zeros, and it kind of left us with some constants that we could actually put together to really find our limit and justify it with calculus. So we're going to do the same thing. The tricky part on this is you're talking about having a x to the sixth, but it's inside of a square root. And so what you need to keep in mind is x to the sixth is equivalent to an x to the third on the outside of a square root. But there is one little bit of trickiness that we got to take into consideration, that when you are plugging in, and so it's equivalent to an x to the third, see that, right? x to the third, if um, or when our x is approaching infinity, versus we want to treat it as a negative x to the third when x is approaching negative infinity. And the challenge becomes when we plug in and we start to do this math, we'll kind of revisit like, well, what happens? There's a little bit of thing that we need to consider that we have to account for because of the odd power. Uh, if everything was a whole bunch of even powers, like nowhere did we have an odd power, then it wouldn't play any role. But when you plug in positives versus negatives, negatives to an odd power is definitely going to be something different. Okay, so Let's kind of go through the math and show we do have a little bit of a problem when we do the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So let's just do the positive one. So the limit as x approaches infinity, we need to manipulate everything. So we're going to take on the inside, right? We're going to be taking this big giant square root and 25x to the sixth, we're going to be dividing by x to the sixth plus x to the fourth divided by x to the sixth plus two divided by x to the sixth. Okay, but then on the top, the equivalent version of x to the sixth in a square root is x to the third. So x to the third minus the three x squared divided by x to the third plus eight over x to the third, right? And so we start simplifying this thing out. We have a limit x approaches infinity, uh, we're going to be getting a 10 minus 3 over x plus 8 over x to the third divided by a giant square root 25 plus 1 over x squared plus 2 over x to the sixth. Okay, so that's what we got going on. Now we're at a point that we can plug in an infinity into this. So if we plug in infinity, we're looking at a 10 minus three over infinity plus eight over infinity, and then divided by square root of 25 plus one over infinity plus two over infinity. All right, which gives us, those are approaching zeros. That those are approaching zeros. And so we're really left with 10 over the square root of 25, which equals 10 over 5, which gives us 2. So when we graph this and we look to the right, the graph would be approaching 2 on the right. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. That um, when you were doing a negative, because we have an odd power, we would want to divide, but treat it like a negative x to the third, okay? So if we treat it like a positive, then we would get the exact same answer. But let's graph it and show what the problem is. That if we were to take this graph, oops, sorry, clear. Let's go um, y equals, let's do a fraction. So we're going to graph 10x to the third 
minus three x squared plus eight over square root 25 x to the sixth plus x to the fourth plus two. And we graph this thing, so we'll do normal. So here's the left side being a negative two, and here's the right side being a positive two. So if we didn't consider the fact that we have an odd power on the top and an even power on the bottom, and we didn't take into consideration that when we plug in a negative and we cube it, we're gonna get a negative over something that's gonna be positive on the bottom, then we would never catch this. So when you're pulling out and you have these negatives or you have an odd going on, you have to consider that when you're going to negative infinity, you have to keep a negative in. Because when this thing simplifies, you don't have the ability to make this value negative, right? And that's the problem. So we would need to be dividing everything by a negative x to the third um, on the outside, right? So then that's going to be 10x to the third. We'd be dividing by a negative x to the third minus the 3x squared divided by negative x to the third plus an 8, negative x to the third. And then the inside wouldn't be any different because it's an even. So we'd still have this big giant 25, x to the 6, x to the 6, and then the exact same, plus x to the 4, x to the 6, plus 2 over x to the 6, right? And so here's the key. This piece right here becomes the limit as x approaches negative infinity. It becomes negative 10, and then the rest of the stuff is going to become 0, so they don't really matter. So we'll still write it. We can change signs, but none of that stuff is going to matter. And then uh, square root, we're still going to have a 25, and then plus values that are going to go away. x to the second plus 2 over x to the sixth. All right, so when you plug in, you're still going to get a negative 10 now instead of a positive 10, and then these are going to go to zeros. This is going to go to a zero over your square root of 25, which is going to be a negative 10 over 5, which is going to get you a negative 2. So that agrees with our graph, that as we go to the right, positive infinity, our graph is leveling off at 2, and we go to the left, our graph is leveling off at negative 2. And you can see that in the table as well, that as you go into the negatives, you're going to have a negative applied to it. All right, so it's a little bit of a tricky thing. Uh, if you have a positive, if you have even powers, you don't have to worry about anything, but it's that odd power being the highest power on the numerator. That's what kind of throws this off and that we have to account for the fact when we head to the negatives, we have to keep um, in the back of our head that a negative is going to be attached to that. So, so that was doing a little bit of a trickier version, um, kind of insides and outsides a little bit more complicated than what your normal problems are.